Hey HK fans, James here to bring you another video on HK weapons. Uh, this week I'd like to talk about uh, HK's LEM system or law enforcement modification. Uh, this continues to be probably one of the most requested questions I get from customers and friends. Um, people wondering, hey, I've got an HK pistol. I'm not even sure if it is LEM or if it's double action, single action. Can you explain to me uh, what I've got? Uh, tell me a little bit more about the system, uh, the pros and cons, or can I convert my pistol from this variant to that variant um, and how to do that? So um, because of the popularity and because of how often I see it, I think it's a good, good time to really pay it some attention. So let's go in and start with the history first. Um, just like everything that HK does as far as their weapons programs, nothing is just on the um, assumption that, hey, this will be fun for the U.S. commercial market. Uh, it's always done from a standpoint of a government you know, military or police uh, contract request, and this is no different. Uh, so take yourself back to 1999, um, the Department of uh, Immigration Naturalization Services uh, was looking for an enhanced double action only capability. Um, and this then grew into, after September 11th, the formation of Homeland Security and TSA, um, the largest U.S. government uh, pistol contract for for law enforcement in U.S. history. Um, and what it resulted in is a USP Compact and LEM, the P2000 series being designed and offered an LEM, which included the P2000 and the P2000SK. And those pistols were ordered and purchased and delivered in 9mm, 40, and 357 SIG, depending on which specific agency uh, it went to and, and the sub-departments of those agencies. Um, and then after 2001, the LEM system uh, was offered uh, to the civilian commercial market. Um, so with that said, let's think about back in, in that time period. Uh, in the 90s, you still had uh, many agencies who were carrying double action revolvers and were transitioning finally to semi-automatic pistols. Um, and at that time, uh, firearms companies were offering double action only variants of semi-automatic pistols as well as single action, double action pistols. Um, to help with that transition then, and get those officers used to what they were familiar with, which was a big, heavy, long uh, trigger pull with each shot. Um, Beretta did that with their uh, 92 series, their D series. H&K did that with uh, one of the variants of the USP, which was a double action only variant. Um, it's since been discontinued, um, but if you've ever had the opportunity to, to try it out, it, it's a pretty horrible, um, heavy uh, trigger pull. Um, so in order to continue to respond to those kind of contracts to those agencies that still wanted double action only variant, but they knew that they wanted to make the trigger a better system, a lighter overall trigger pull, um, but still have the reliability of those double action shots, that's where H&K came into play to, uh, to introduce this LEM system. So let's uh, take a deep dive here onto the workbench and see exactly how the system works how it can be converted from one weapon to the next, some of those specifics and the different types we have, and hopefully that'll answer some more of your questions. Okay, so in order to understand LEM, first we have to understand double action, single action, and double action only. Uh, so bear with me if you already um, have understood this process, um, but I think it'll help the larger group. Okay, I'm using a P30S model. It's a double action, single action with the external safety as uh, a training aid here. Okay, so double action, single action. What does that mean? Double action is means it takes two different actions to have the weapon fire. You have to pull the trigger back far enough in order for the hammer to be cocked, which then causes the hammer strut to compress the hammer uh, strut spring and hold the hammer in place by the sear. Okay, that's the first action. And your second action is to then pull the trigger far enough that the trigger bar will release the hammer by the sear and allow the hammer to fall forward, striking the firing pin, which then ignites the primer and we detonate a round. Okay, so that's a double action, a single action pistol. And obviously single action means there's only one action needs to be taken. The weapon is already cocked with the hammer back and the hammer strut compressing the hammer strut spring. And now all we're having to do is to pull the trigger back far enough in order to get the trigger bar to release the hammer by the sear. Okay. Double action only 
means that there is no single action mode. There is no capability to cock the hammer back and have a, a shortened lighter trigger pull with the hammer, hammer strut and spring already compressed. Instead, you have one very long trigger pull that in one motion will cock the hammer, hammer strut and spring and then release the hammer from the sear going forward. Okay, the obvious downside to that is that um, you are left with a, a very heavy and undesirable trigger pull. So how do we fix that? How do we make that an enhanced thing? Well, we find a way, as HK did, to pre-cock the hammer uh, for their double action only variant, their LEM model. Okay, so let me show you how they did that. Okay, so what H and K developed for the USP series was an LEM conversion kit. This is the same one that you can order directly from HK or one of their parts providers, uh, and it comes with the following pieces. There's two different hammer stretch springs for LEM, and you can see that one is slightly shorter than the other. Okay, and that's because they developed this uh, to work later with the HK45 series as well. And the HK45 Compact has a different uh, rear uh, grip panel section, uh, so it, it, it won't fit the full size um, hammer strut spring. And I'll cover that more in an HK45 specific video. But in any, in any case, the longer one is the one you use for the HK40, uh, HK USP series, both full size and compact. And this is also the one used in the full-size HK45. If you've got the compact HK45, you use the smaller one. Uh, it comes with two uh, trigger return springs. And if you see here, put it up close enough, hopefully you can tell that one on the left has smaller um, dimensional springs than the one on the right that's thicker. So the one on the left is your light LEM trigger return spring, and the one on the right is your heavy trigger return spring. So that's the, the difference between uh, heavy and light LEM variants, if you're wondering those things. And the difference in trigger pull is about five and a half pounds on the light and about seven and a half on the heavy, okay? Next, we have the two-piece hammer, okay? And as you can see, this hammer is a bobbed hammer design, okay? Whereas on the original double action, single action pistols, you have a spurred design, okay? And the spur, obviously, with the little grip sections there is to give you the traction to be able to pull the hammer back for single action mode. Well, because LEM doesn't need you to pull the hammer back to the rear, uh, they came up with a bob design, which is less of a snag issue. It's almost completely flush with the pistol. And then they have what's called a cocking piece, okay, which fits inside the hammer and when the weapon's completely assembled you wouldn't see that okay there's a new hammer axle which fits from one side of the, the pistol to the other side and holds all the hammer components in place um, and this is different than the standard double action single action um, hammer axle and then there's an actual cocking piece spring okay this cocking piece spring has a leg here and a leg here and they will hold against this little notch in the, uh, the back of the hammer, and then in the last piece into the front of the sear, okay, as they're compressed. So that's your LEM conversion kit for the HK45 and uh, the USP series. And I'll explain how it works in the P30 and uh, P2000 here in a moment. Okay, so what I've done is I've installed LEM conversion kit into this USP receiver. And what you're left with are the parts you no longer need uh, once you've done that conversion. Uh, so you've got your slide plate, your slide plate spring, and your detent plate. All three of these things are what allow the safety lever, decocker lever, uh, to operate. Um, and since it's double action only, I don't need those anymore. I'll take those out. There's a different axle for the selector lever, so you remove that. There's a different sear um, for double action only. And we've already talked about the original spurred hammer for double action only, you don't need that, or the original hammer spring. The LEM hammer spring is a different weight and a different color. Okay, so what you're left with at that point is um, your two-piece bobbed hammer, okay? The hammer itself, hollow in the center, and your cocking piece fits within that. Now, once it's fully assembled, you can't really tell. I mean, you can look down inside there 
and you can see that my hammer is moving and, and there's something in the center of it that's not really rotating as much, um, but it's not really as visible as it could be. Okay, so let's talk about how LEM actually works. Okay, you've got your two piece hammer um, and your ex with your external bob type, and then you've got a cocking piece and hammer that are rotated to the rear of the hammer axle when the slide moves back to the rear. Okay, what do I mean by that? Is, is whether you're loading the pistol for the first time and uh, cycling around in the chamber, or you're pulling the trigger to fire, it's the actual motion of the slide pushing back on the hammer shell that is going to cock um, and compress that hammer strut and hammer strut spring, just like it does with a, with a double action only or a single action shot. The difference is now when I release the slide forward again, you'll see the hammer shell moves forward as well. Okay, and the trigger bar is moving, the trigger's moving. Okay, so what it looks like at this point is that it's actually in double action mode. But in reality, what's happening inside the pistol is that the hammer strut and spring are compressed and they're being held in that compressed position by the cocking piece on the inside of the hammer shell up against the sear. Okay, so all you have now in order to fire the pistol is just the, the distance and weight it takes to move the trigger and the trigger bar far enough to release the sear from where it's holding on the cocking piece. So a nice light pull, trigger bar comes back, the hammer shell goes back because the hammer still has to, to strike the firing pin. And now we're right up against the wall where that uh, sear is holding on the cocking piece. I pull the trigger all the way through and it'll fire, okay? Hammer's gonna go forward, the hammer uh, strut spring decompress, the weapon's gonna cycle again this time. And as the slide goes back, it's going to cock the uh, hammer again, holding it now uh, again with the compressed hammer strut and spring. And here's my reset point. You can see how short that distance is. And now I'm ready to fire again and so on. So it's a very short distance for each reset point to fire the next shot. And all you really have when you're starting fresh is just a light take up until you get to that wall and then break through. Hopefully that makes sense for how LEM actually works. So now let's cover um, the benefits uh, and features of LEM system. Uh, the first and foremost is there's no longer a need for an external safety or decocking lever. Uh, this makes the weapon inherently faster to bring into action and uh, limits the chance that you forget to disengage a safety as you're bringing the weapon into firing. And because it's already pre-cocked and the hammer's forward, um, in this safe configuration, you don't have to worry about needing a safety either. Uh, we've talked about the trigger pull weights, um, but it's a consistent double action only enhanced uh, trigger pull for every single shot. So about five pounds for, uh, for your uh, light and about seven pounds for your heavy. Uh, next, there's a safe length of fire travel or slack that you have to overcome um, and actually physically take part in as you're sighting in to, uh, to take a shot. And then a second, um, slightly heavier, but consistent trigger pull with every single shot you fire. So unlike previously where double action only, it was very heavy trigger pull every single time. Uh, now you've got a light pull. And unlike double action to single action, there's no heavy trigger pull for the first shot and then transitioning to a lighter pull for the second shot. The shooter can get used to the same trigger pull um, consistently throughout. It's got a short and consistent reset distance normally associated with single action uh, pistols, which enhances the speed and accuracy uh, for multiple fo follow-up shots. And then it's got a heavy, reliable um, hammer spring and hammer drop initiating the firing pin, uh, even in adverse conditions. Uh, everybody um, who wants a weapon that can fire in really adverse conditions understands the benefit of a hammer-fired gun over uh, a striker-fired uh, weapon system. And then lastly, uh, you have the failsafe of a true double action mode should the uh, primer fail to detonate on the first strike um, of the firing pin. Okay, and what, what people usually refer to that is a second strike capability. What that means is if I'm in my LEM mode and I pull the trigger and release the hammer and for some reason there's a malfunction with the ammunition, it doesn't fire, I can just simply pull the trigger again. It's gonna be a longer, heavier double action pull this time 
to get it all the way through because the slide did not cycle the, the hammer, but I do have that ability. And some people find that as a benefit versus doing what you would have to do otherwise is your immediate action of tap, rack, bang to get back into the fight. You just attempt to fire again. Now let's cover the part that I usually get the most questions on, and that usually refers to you know, what specific model do I have or can I convert my pistol from double action only or double action, single action to LEM or vice versa. Um, the USP series, I'll cover this more in depth in a separate video, uh, but it's universally modular. There's nine different variations of fire control you can convert this pistol to. Um, and when they designed the HK45 series, they just made it basically an ergonomically enhanced uh, USP. Uh, so we've got that pretty much covered. The confusing part usually comes into the P2000 and the P30. So I've got a P2000 in LEM in my left hand and a P30 in double action, single action in my right hand. And with these two pistols, HK did not carry over that universal modularity. And what they did instead was they created uh, two separate receivers for the pistols. So there's one receiver for double action, single action, and one receiver for LEM for each one of those pistols. And if you can see here as I put them side by side, this, uh, the difference is, and it's the same on both the P2000 and P30 regardless of whether it's LEM or double action, single action. On the LEM variant, you notice again the bobbed hammer and smooth in the back. And on the uh, double action, single action, um, because they still wanted to have a decocker, they removed the decocking lever to the back left of the receiver, just to the left of the hammer, okay? And here's where it becomes the problem. So because you have now a decocking system that you have to do that in two different receivers, there is no universal way to convert um, these pistols from single action and double action over to LEM or vice versa. And what I mean by that is it's not an authorized um, conversion, meaning that if you do try and, and convert these weapons over, you're gonna be voiding your warranty, and if you have a problem with your gun, you send it in, HK could refuse that. So is it still possible? Yes and no, okay? And what I mean by that is it is possible to convert um, a P2000 P2, or P30 from double action, single action over to LEM, but it is not the other direction, okay? And how, how's that possible? What do, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is it all um, hinges on this decocking lever. So if I'm going to remove um, the internal components from this double action gun and put in LEM components, I have to figure out what am I gonna do with the space here to the left of the hammer that would no longer be occupied by a decocker if I took the decocker out. Um, so I could, I could convert all that and make it LEM, but now I'm gonna have this gap to the left of the hammer. That's obviously not ideal for allowing debris to get in and, and possibly having the LEM um, cocking spring pop out of position. So what you can do instead is just leave the decocker in place. It'll still be functional. It'll still work to decock the compressed hammer strut and spring, even though there'd absolutely be no reason why you would want to, um, but you'd have to leave that in place, okay? And because there is no opening cutout on the left side of the uh, LEM receiver, there is no way to put in the necessary decocking lever if you were converting from LEM to DASA. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and is clear as mud. And also, you have to understand that the um, LEM system for the P2000 and P30 is different than it is on the USP series. So here's an example. Here is the USP series, HK45 series LEM hammer. And in this hand is the P2000, P31. And you can see that the axle hole is significantly smaller on the P2000, P30 because the hammer axle is uh, significantly smaller. And so is the cocking spring for LEM on P2000, P30 versus LEM on USP HK45. So you cannot buy the HK, USP, HK45 LEM conversion kit, which you normally see for sale, and put it in one of your guns because the parts are different. And because it's not an authorized conversion, you won't see HK selling a P2000, P30 LEM conversion kit in a bag on hkparts.net. So if you're gonna do that kind of conversion, you'd have to buy those individual components 
from an LEM P2000 or P30 that you would need and swap those over. Okay, so we've covered the history, uh, design of the LEM system, uh, the benefits and features that go with it, and then uh, the intricacies as far as uh, what you can do for converting weapons and what you can't do for converting weapons. Um, and hopefully that answered a lot of those questions for you guys. From an armorer's perspective on LEM, uh, I've seen it could be completely reliable. I've never had a single failure with an LEM system um, that I haven't seen on any other um, striker fired or double action, single action uh, variant. Uh, incredibly reliable. Um, from a shooter's perspective, uh, I think it's a great system um, enhancement uh, for HK weapons, especially for competition shooters or people that really want to push themselves for speed uh, in those areas where, you know, two more millimeters of travel times 20 or 50 shots in a stage uh, could mean going from first place to 10th place. Um, it definitely has its benefits. Um, and another neat feature is the fact that if you own multiple HK weapon systems, like maybe you're into USPs and you've got a match, an elite, an expert, a tactical, a full-size compact, uh, you don't have to sell all those guns uh, that were in double action, single action mode um, in order to buy the LEM variants of them. You can just convert them all over, and I help a lot of customers with that. Um, also, from an instructor operator type standpoint, uh, I think that I see uh, newer shooters who are coming from striker fire guns like a VP9 or Glock have less of a transition challenge than older, more established shooters who've come from a double action, single action background. You know, like for me, you know, or for a law enforcement guy, my military background, you know, really used to that. And so the first time I, I got into LEM, it was, it was a weird feeling of this take up period until I hit the wall to transition through that. Um, but I got used to it and I've really uh, enjoyed the systems. So. I hope that clears things up for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've learned something. As always, um, you've got uh, needs for HK support and training. Give me a shout. That's what I'm here for. Thanks, guys. See you next time.